it's Mad Moon Mama here, and I'm um, going to do kind of a longer video today because I haven't updated on my no-spend January progress um, in at least a week. So I have a couple things that I am going to talk about in my experience, um, just some things that I've been researching and I've been watching other YouTube videos and people that um, live, you know, debt free or talk about financial freedom, um, uh, frugal living, uh, there's some kooky ladies that do dining on a dime, they wrote a cookbook about um, frugal foods that aren't just beans and rice um, and they have a ton of it's living on pennies I think is the one lady's channel and they're just real kooky it's kind of like hanging out with your mom and your sister or something watching their videos and it's just people talking and hanging out so um, and then there's Debt Free Diana, I think her name is. I'm not sure. Um, but I've been watching all their videos um, to keep me motivated to do No Spend January and just get more ideas and tips on how to continue with frugal living. Um, I already consider myself fairly frugal because I buy most of my clothes secondhand at a thrift store. Um, once in a while, I will buy something really nice. Um, a wonderful lady I know makes beautiful, beautiful clothes, so I'll save up and I'll treat myself to something really nice and it's something that I'll cherish forever and it's better to have one amazing shirt than 30 amazing shirts that really aren't that amazing, that aren't quality made, and they're made by um, probably slave labor. And you wash them three times and they fall apart. You know, the Target t-shirts. Um, so, but there's definitely places that I overspend. And um, a big thing that the dining on a dime ladies talk about is... Um, stop feeling like you deserve everything and they say you do deserve good things and you do deserve to be happy and healthy but um I definitely was like oh I've had that thought process in the past like oh I've worked a long day so I deserve this cookie or I deserve this special drink or um when I worked retail I deserved a lot because I hate <laughs> retail. People are pretty evil out there and you really have to put yourself in the right mindset to not be affected by their energy and their attitudes and their entitlement and just watching how people treat other people out in the world. It's, it's really, it can take away your faith in humanity. So in order to combat that, I would eat salt and vinegar potato <laughs> chips, which aren't really doing me any good physically, but spiritually they kept me from going off the deep end. So, but again, that was, you know, a $3 expense that I would purchase probably twice a week and I would share it with my other team members if they were lucky, but you know, that is three to six dollars a week for something that's not nutrient dense it's not gonna really do me any good and it's just emotional eating I could have done something else for free to check my emotions and not um, per make that purchase but um, so yeah so other things uh, that I've been researching is budgeting because that's something I've tried to do in the past multiple times but I find that it's just really hard for me to stick to a budget like I'm only gonna spend X amount of dollars on this thing you know 
for my car, I'm only spending $75 for gas and, you know, oil change or whatever. But something always happens where, you know, you have an unexpected car repair or you need to buy new wipers or whatever. And so you go over budget. Um, or, you know, you have your set budget, like, um, I'm only going to spend $200 on groceries for the month, but then it's someone's birthday or a special event. Um, and you know, I love to cook, so I'll make something really nice and buy, you know, I'm, I want to give people a healthy option. I don't want to just take cheap garbage food to people because I love them and I don't want them to eat cheap garbage food, you know. But then that costs money. So uh, you'll take from your grocery budget because you've already, you know, come, you're at $175 for the month. There's still two weeks left. And you're going to take from your car or transportation fund to cover that overage, you know. So um, that system hasn't really worked well for me. But I find that... In watching all these other YouTube videos a lot of other people say don't budget because it's gonna screw you up and um, there's a guy that published uh, get out of debt books Dave Ramsey who he's very popular um, and he has an envelope system you know which you put cash for the whole month in each envelope and then you know you only spend what you have in those envelopes so I mean, those systems work for people, but I was one of the people that I found um, it didn't really work with me. I always found like I was taking from somewhere to cover this, and so it's like you always look like you're off budget, but really, you know, you didn't spend more than the amount of money you wanted to spend, but it gets confusing and complicated, it feels. So I've kind of developed more, uh, or I'm trying to develop more mindful spending, um, where, you know, with a budgeting system, you may be tracking everything. Um, and I'm still doing that, and I kind of have set goals for what I think I should be spending on, you know, my bills. And um, I have two, I'm self-employed, so I have two businesses. So what are my costs each month that I'm going to invest into these two businesses? Um, and food wise, what should I be spending for a, you know, a single person? Um, so I, you know, for the month of January, I have been writing down all my things that I've been spending and that to me has helped more. So with just mindfulness, you know, every dollar that I put out, I'm writing down, like, even if it's something really small, like. Um, you know, I went to the co-op this past week and they have these really good paleo chocolate chip cookies that I'm kind of addicted to and I did really good for the first two weeks. I didn't buy any, but I thought, all right, I'm going to buy two of them. Um, they're $1.99 each, so it's $3.90, which is $3.90, but it's not an extravagant cost. It's not $390. So, um, before some of those smaller purchases, I probably wouldn't be tracking as much as bigger purchases. And that's really kind of not great. I've, I've discovered with my own self, just because, you know, if you're really trying to aggressively save money, which I'm trying to do because I would love to buy property and have, um, low mortgage payments and be able to pay it off very quickly so that I don't have debt hanging over my head for 30 years and be paying tons of money in interest. Um, so that's really my, like I've been wanting to do this for years, but I've held myself back by not being more aggressively frugal. Like I have been saving money, but there's definitely things that I can cut back on and save even more money. So I can, my goal is right there within arm's reach if I just put in the effort and the work and decide, do I really want this 
you know, special tea or sparkling water now? Or do I want to be $2 closer to having my own land? That's how I'm trying to shift myself because it's very hard when you're in the now and you really feel like to get you through this day, you need this or you want this or, oh, it's only $2, you know, but that adds up over time, you know. So um, tracking every little penny that I've spent so far in this month has been really good for me. And I wouldn't say I feel like guilt, but I do feel you know, all right, is this a want or a need? And if it's a want, do I really, really want it? And I have to check myself. And there's definitely been things that I've not purchased in order to not spend the money, even though it was something that enticed me and I thought ooh, oh yeah I could use this or that and it's like no I don't really need it what do I have at home that I can use for this so um, that's been good I'm going to uh, probably my last like grocery store shop for the month I'm gonna go to uh, Costco today with my friend um, and I have kind of a set budget of uh, no more than $70 because you know Costco everything's like $10 but you get 500 pounds of beans <laughs> so I'll be able to buy seven things basically no um, but I'm I have a very strict shopping list of things that I'm going to buy and also in my journey to be frugal and also be healthy. I've cut out all the packaged convenience foods, which is like crazy because I really love potato chips. <laughs> I really love potato chips and I might buy some today if I feel like it's a good price. <laughs> but, you know, I would always have these snacky things around that are packaged foods and um we're just a convenience like uh, trader joe's has these really good indian meals that you can put in your freezer and microwave you know but they're 2.99 you could probably make a whole boatload more for two dollars and 99 cents if you buy ingredients um and a lot of these things have food additives and chemicals and things like that that i know for me they ultimately affect me and um you know, make my psoriasis flare up and mess with my digestive system. So they're really inconvenience foods because they may taste good when you eat them, but when your body's trying to break them down, absorb them, then you don't often feel good, or at least I don't. Um, so, and I was, you know, trying to find ways to save money on groceries and stuff like that. You know, I've, I've thought about extreme couponing and all that stuff. And I've watched several YouTube videos of a lady today, um, doing extreme couponing and she gets all this stuff for free and she eats at Chick-fil-A for free and McDonald's for free. And that's great. And there's definitely people that can use her information, but I don't eat fast food. I worked at McDonald's for <laughs> way too long in high school and college because I needed the income. Um, and I've eaten enough free McDonald's food. And maybe that's why I have psoriasis now because I filled my body with toxic sludge. <laughs> and it's just empty calories. There's not really any nutrition in it. And it's convenience food and I'm sure it tastes good working there now I don't think I can ever enjoy it again but I know other people who've not worked there and they love it or they love their coffee or whatever but um you know so getting to eat at McDonald's for free is not appealing to me because I don't want to eat that food I don't want to support that um you know idea that that's food 
So um, that's not going to work for me. And a lot of the couponing is for, again, processed foods and um, cleaning products or body care products that have a ton of chemicals in them. They're terrible for the environment. And I'd rather be a dirty <laughs> hippie than shower myself in, you know, a product that has 50 chemicals in it that's dyed blue. I don't need blue shampoo. I just don't need it. And, you know, I mean, if you can get it for free and if you're really hard up and that's, and you're comfortable with that, more power to you. And everybody has the right to choose. But for me, those things aren't worth the time and the effort and the gas to go and get free stuff that I don't want or need. So, at least I don't have to do that. I, that takes some pressure off. Um, I do like miss eating at a restaurant. Um, I, you know, in previous videos, talked about my friend blessing me with a meal at a restaurant and um, the food was delicious, but I think the company was what made the food taste so good. And, um, you know, it's, it's really fun to be able to go out and socialize and a lot of the things we do to be social do cost money. So, you know, I've kind of missed out on that a little bit this month. There's been a few things I've wanted to do, some bands I wanted to see that would be a really good show, but you know, it was $30 a ticket and the gas to drive there, which it was not far, but still, you know, it's probably $2 worth of gas. And then if you're there, they were at a bar. So um, I'm not really a big drinker anymore and so I don't wouldn't have to worry about spending money on alcohol but if you want a bottle of water that's two or three dollars if you want to tip your bartender so it just adds up to you know about forty dollars for this concert which sometimes it's worth spending that money for that experience but if I'm really trying to be frugal and limit you know my experiences currently um I, I didn't go and I felt sad but it's also you know those two concerts that I would have gone to that's $80 in my pocket still so I don't feel sad about that um, and I <laughs> my rainy jar <laughs> rainy day pickle barrel <laughs> so I've also started um, every dollar that I have and I put a few five dollars five dollar bills in there but so far this month you know if I have bought gas or groceries um and I get change and I get a dollar I put it in the pickle jar so this is my way of it's only a dollar here or there throw it in and this will help pay for any um like spring summertime activities I have coming up there's a music festival that I went to last year and it was the first time in 12 years that I had been to this festival and I love it. The people are awesome. There's all kinds of music. It's just basically you shouldn't sleep for three days because there's so much stuff going on and it's just so fun. And I did, um, they allow blanket vending so I took my cloth pad and some herbal products um, last year and my friend came with me and so it was $40 for the day or like 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. to vend your stuff on a blanket on this big open lawn so we split the cost um, so each of us paid $20 and we each made about $100 on the stuff that we sold so <clears throat> I was only out that $20. Um, I was able to pay, it's $100 for the early bird ticket prices. So I was pretty much able to pay for my ticket 
um, by bending stuff. So um, there's that, but I'd like to have that $100, you know, ready that I can make the purchase and it's not taking from, you know, my savings or something else. So that's my pickle jar for fun. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's been a pretty good month. Um, I have definitely cut my overall spending on like the, you know, groceries and household needs <clears throat> and what my cats need for the month. Um, I used to buy more expensive cat litter and so I cut back on that and purchased the Target brand cat litter, which I think is just as good and half the price. So um, that saved me 50% making that switch. Um, I was running, we're getting down on cat food and I had purchased that at the end of December and I think I, and everything was on sale. I got the wet and the dry for um, $35. So I signed up with this Chewy.com this for all these pet supplies and um, they do an auto ship every, I set it up for every eight weeks, but they gave me 30% off my first order. And then what I bought was like, the food was on sale, uh, less expensive than what I'd pay at the pet store. And the wet food was like really weirdly cheap, like super cheap. So I bought a good bit of that. Um, and use that 30% discount and I'll save 5% every time I auto ship, but I might cancel it in the meantime if I find better prices <laughs> elsewhere. But I use that to get that extra discount. So I definitely worked my dollar there and using those coupons and stuff. So you can find ways to coupon, even if you pretty much just eat vegetables. <laughs> um, definitely cut back on my you know, entertainment. I did mail a package to someone and that cost me about six fifty. So I put that into what I'd say a gift category. Um, and it wasn't something I needed to mail, but I wanted to do it. So um, I figured six fifty is a fine price to pay for a gift, <laughs> not expensive. Um, and yeah, I've cut back on my grocery spending a ton by writing a grocery list and sticking within that and also staying away from all those packaged foods. Like even if you think it's only a dollar fifty for this box of mac and cheese or whatever it is, if you buy that, it all adds up and there's no nutrition in them or very little or it's been fortified with synthetic vitamins so there is nutrition in it. So I just don't buy them. I just buy tons of produce and I did buy some meat, which was the most expensive thing that I purchased. Um, and today, you know, I'll get some extra stuff like almond butter or peanut butter at Costco and um, I should be good for the final week of January. So I shouldn't need to spend any more money on food. And um, I'm gonna stick within a budget of 300 bucks for the month for food. And I do buy um, organic meat, which does, it is pricier than the conventional meat. Um, <clears throat> but I looked up a budget for a single person, um, what you should be spending on a weekly basis. So, the thrifty is about $38 and it goes to liberal, which is $76. And so I definitely could eat the thrifty amount and still eat organic produce and still eat some meat and that sort of thing. Um, totally doable. But I've been buying a few things and kind of stocking up when I find a deal. So, but there's five weeks in January and 300 divided by five is $60 a week. So I fall somewhere in the moderate um, 
there's thrifty, low cost, moderate, and liberal spending for food. So $60 a week and I still have food that I can use in the next, you know, two, three weeks. So if I don't spend anything the first week of February, then um, that's already bringing the cost of what I spent this month down into that probably thrifty range. So yeah, so it's been going good. Um, I haven't totaled up all my income for the month and all my, um, I'm pretty sure of where my expenses are. I don't, you know, I don't think there's anything unforeseen coming my way. So I kind of have an idea of what I've spent. Um, so I don't have a total of my savings for the month yet, but um, I'm hoping it's, uh, at least $500 in savings for the month. That would be awesome. And, um, uh, yeah. So, all right. That's what's been going on. And, uh, hope you have a great day. Thanks.